Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video we're talking about the top ways of cleaning and sterilizing an N95 mask. I have a number of videos on my channel about how to do these various things, uh, but I thought I'd bring them all together with the current best practices as they are, you know, seen by the world at the moment right now. I want to uh, delineate first the difference between cleaning and sterilizing. Cleaning a mask is removing particles, dust, ash, anything uh, like that out of the mask, and sterilizing is destroying any virus or uh, contamination, bacteria, anything like that that might be on the mask. Those are two totally different things. Cleaning a mask isn't necessarily going to sterilize it, and sterilizing a mask isn't necessarily going to clean out any of those particles and, and debris. So I'm going to talk about both those things separately, and then at the end of the video, I want to talk about some very important things you need to consider when you're using your mask, because even if you are using best practices for sterilizing and cleaning, if you fail to remember some of these other things, it's not really going to make any difference whether you even wore the mask in the first place. So stick around to the end of the video to make sure you hear that information. First, let's talk about sterilizing because that's what most people are concerned about right now. Uh, getting rid of virus, specifically coronavirus, that might be on the outside surface of your mask. There are three top methods right now for doing that, and they involve either using UV light or heat. Let's talk first about the free way of doing it, and that's using the sun's natural ultraviolet energy to destroy virus on the mask. If you take a mask that's been contaminated with virus, or possibly contaminated with virus, and you put it out in the sun for five plus hours, strong direct sun, uh, not, you know, if it's a cloudy day, you know, you're not going to get these kind of results. You need strong direct sun for five or more hours. If you leave it out there, and you want to make sure you secure it in some way so it doesn't blow away, right, you know, or you lose it, uh, you know, otherwise, if you put it out there in strong direct sunlight, that's going to destroy and deactivate the virus that is on the surface of the mask. Now remember, masks are three-dimensional objects. They have more than one surface. You don't want to take that and kind of flip that around, or at the very least, maybe get a mirror and a rack and have it suspended so the sunlight is kind of coming up from underneath and bouncing around and getting on all the surfaces. That's the free way of doing it if you have access to sunlight. Another way of sterilizing the mask is to use artificial UV light, specifically in the UVC range, which is 270 nanometers. Uh, there are many products that are available. There's a sterilization box that has UV light in it. That's something that I use. Uh, there are uh, UV lights that are for uh, sterilizing in a, a whole room or something like that. Any of these uh, ultraviolet lights that operate at UVC wavelengths, around 270 nanometers, are going to destroy virus. And depending on the intensity of the lights, usually you can achieve that within about an hour of being exposed to the light and the resulting ozone that uh, you know is created by that light. Now you need to be careful around that light. You don't want to have your eyes or your body exposed to it. It's dangerous. The light bulbs should have warnings on them saying, you know, don't look directly into this light. In fact, if the light bulbs don't exhibit those warnings, they're probably not operating in the proper uh, you know, wavelength and they're not going to have the effect that you're looking for. The third way of uh, sterilizing a mask, if you don't have access to direct sunlight, you don't have any of these specialty light bulbs, is a conventional oven. Uh, now I'm saying a conventional oven, not a microwave oven. A conventional oven if you put a mask in there and you set it to 170 degrees and you leave the mask in there with that nice dry heat for 30 minutes, that should be killing any of the virus that's on the surface. Now, uh, depending on the size of the oven, like if it's a small toaster oven, you have to keep in mind that you know the temperature in one part of the oven may not be the same as the temperature in a different part of the oven. You're going to want to keep your mask away from the heating elements because it's going to be really hot near the heating elements. You don't want to burn parts of your mask. You don't want the rubber bands that are on the mask to get melted off or start a fire or anything like that. So you're going to want to keep it well away from the actual heating elements, and you might want to use an additional thermometer to make sure about what the temperature in the oven actually is. Most ovens aren't, uh, you know, intended to be used at such low temperatures, so, you know, it, the, the temperature reading on your oven may not be entirely accurate. So if you have the ability to have an oven thermometer that will tell you what the actual temperature is in the oven, that will ensure that you're not overheating it and melting your mask, or, you know, underheating it and not doing the destructive things that you want to do to the virus. Now, everything that I just said, it should be uh, noted that these are, you know, developing procedures. They're, you know, coming out, uh, you know, up until now and even still now, N95 masks are labeled as single use. The best thing that you could possibly do is have plenty of masks so you can cycle through them. But if you're in a situation where you do not have more than one mask, and the option is between having a sterilized mask that you wear again, you know, or no mask at all, uh, and you need to go out, you know, into the world for some reason, uh, 
Obviously, having a sterilized mask is going to be better for you than having no mask at all. But the best thing you can possibly do is having a new, fresh mask. But in an emergency situation, sometimes that's not available. So those are the ways that you can sterilize a mask with using the best practices that are known to people at the moment. The next thing I want to talk about is cleaning a mask. Cleaning a mask is different than sterilizing a mask. If you have a mask that's plugged up with ash, dust, debris, any of that kind of stuff, and you put it out in the sun, or you put it in a UV light box, or you put it in an oven, none of those things are going to have anything to say about removing the the particles that are clogging up your mask. So there are ways of cleaning out a mask, but I should say that these methods, generally speaking, are somewhat destructive to the fiber of the mask. Uh, you know, so if you have a mask that has been exposed to a virus environment and it's got been kind of clogged up with a lot of particulates and you're noticing that now, you know, the air is going around the sides of the mask, it's not going through the mask, that's obviously a problem in a virus environment because, you know, if the air is going around the sides of the mask because it's so clogged up on the front, you know, you're not getting any of that filtration for the virus either. So it puts you in a bind where you need to kind of figure out and balance, you know, what's the best thing that I can do at this moment. Again, obviously the best thing you could do would be to have multiple masks or avoid going out at all. But if you're in a situation where you don't have any backup masks and you have to go out, sometimes using a clean mask is better than nothing at all. There are people, and I'm sure you'll see them in, in the comments that will say, don't wear any mask at all. You should, you shouldn't do it, but yeah, I'll take my chances with the clean mask versus taking chances with, uh, you know, going out with nothing at, at all because the instructions on the mask say that, you know, it's single use. So let's talk about how to clean a mask. There are three uh, ways that I've used to clean masks. I've personally used these and I've used them for ash, dust, debris, sawdust kind of environments. So let's talk about the three methods for cleaning a mask. One that I've used a lot, and I have a video about it on the channel, is rinsing water. You take water and you rinse it like right from your tap, from the inside of the mask to the outside of the mask. You don't want to go the other way because then you'd be pushing stuff deeper down into the mask. So you want to take uh, water and run it from the clean inside surface of the mask outside, and that's going to flush a lot of the dust and debris out. You'll, if you do that, you're going to want to dry it out really quickly so you don't get mold and mildew growing up, uh, growing in the mask. You could use a dry heat oven for that. You know, whatever method that you might need to get it dry quickly, you know, you definitely want to do that because you don't want to create a mold factory on it. I've used that many times. I've refreshed masks many times. In fact, right now I'm working on a building project where I've been using a lot of sanding throws a lot of sawdust up in the air and I'm using a mask that's been cleaned that way. It breathes perfectly well and I'm not getting sawdust into my lungs because you know when you're in an environment where you're breathing a lot of sawdust you can feel it you know so I know that the mask works when you do that. Another way of cleaning it out if you have access is a compressor and this is one of the uh, the less damaging uh, ways that you can uh, you know clean it out is to use air to blow from the inside of the mask to the outside of the mask and that will help to push a lot of that sawdust back out of the mask. In fact even if you just put a mask on and it's been uh, impregnated with a lot of sawdust just doing a big puff of air you know yourself through your through the mask you can see poof, a cloud come out of the mask so you know any way that you can kind of back flush with water or air is going to be helpful and a third way is probably the most convenient for a lot of people and that's using a vacuum cleaner if you take a vacuum cleaner and take off the attachments you just have the hose and put the hose on the outside surface of the mask you're using that negative pressure to draw the dust out of the mask that works very well as well i've used that on a number of occasions and it's very effective so those are three methods of sterilizing a mask and three methods of cleaning a mask remember those are two different things they are mutually exclusive in a lot of ways but in an emergency sometimes you can't worry about whether something's perfect you just know that something's better than nothing at all now i promised you at the end i was going to talk a little bit about uh, some procedures related to wearing an n95 mask if you're going out into an, a virus environment that are very important remember that when you get back uh, you know from whatever environment you know you felt was contaminated the surface of that mask should be considered a contaminated surface as well so when you're taking that mask off you want to take care to not be touching the outside surface you want you don't want the outside surface to be uh, getting mushed against your face you want to take it off in a way that where you are just removing the contaminated surface away from you and quickly put that in whatever environment you're going to use to sterilize that or throw it away if you're going to be doing you know that method in addition to that, as soon as you do take it off, you want to make sure you wash your hands, certainly, and any other part of your body you feel may have been exposed. Certainly washing 
your hands first, then wash your face, uh, is a good way of just trying to avoid, you know, contamination of anything that might have fallen anywhere on your person and, you know, realistically the rest of your clothing. So I hope that you find these methods helpful. Ideally, if you can avoid going out, that is the absolute best thing that you can do. If you can have extra masks, that is the second best thing that you can be doing. And remember that there are other things that, that are critical too. It's not just all about a mask goggles to, to protect your face and if you can have coveralls any kind of a like a uh, you know a trash bag over you or a you know professional uh, sort of like coveralls are some things that you can use to wear out in the environment and then remove those carefully you know remembering uh, cross-contamination when you get back so that's it good luck to everyone and thanks for watching this episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.